Hey everybody, uh, so I went shopping and decided to do a haul. I actually went to um, Dollar Tree and um, got a few things that I needed and then I got uh, some things from my local thrift store, um, my Goodwill that's right around the corner from my home. Um, so I thought I would share because these are, um, you know, junk journal related. Now I did get other things. <laughs> I got like some clothing, I got um, some things for my house, um, just things that I found that I thought were cute. But these were things that I had um, an intention of using for junk journaling and mixed media art. Now, um, one thing about me is that I get suckered into <laughs> a lot of these things that other people are doing. I'll, um, I'll think, oh, I can, I can, um, if I could just find that, like I could you know, do this with it. So one of those things was this Rolodex. And I've actually been, I'm gonna try to get it in the camera here. Um, I've actually been trying to find a Rolodex for a while. Um, and how lucky I am that most of this is empty. Um, this does have like names and a couple of names here and there. Like, I don't think even in every section, but all of the cards and everything were um, for the most part blank. Um, I don't love the turny ones like this. Um, I like the ones that are file folders or um, in like boxes, but uh, this was $1.99. And I actually looked at purchasing one of these on Amazon and on eBay, and you wouldn't believe how expensive these still are. Um, I didn't think that people even really still used these for like office work because you know numbers change so frequently now but i thought that was an incredible deal because um I, I follow so many artists that are doing like daily prompts and things like that on these little cards and you can get refill packs of the rolodex uh cards i believe so i thought this will be fun to play with and gel print on um jelly print on if i can um talk. <laughs> um, and speaking of which, I did order a, a few small jelly plates because all of the jelly plates I have are, are big jelly plates. Um, so I wanted to experiment with the little ones and this will be the perfect size for that. I can also, I can also use um, index cards to do the small jelly printing if I want, um, but I just really thought these were cute. And then I'm trying to, when I went, I tried to tell myself I'm not going to buy any books because <laughs> I have a million, literally I have a box, two boxes full of books that I've purchased and I'm still, you know, using. Um, but I did look because I like to buy books for myself and I found two things in the book section, three things actually, that um, piqued my interest. And so this was a uh it looked like a book but it's actually postcards and um they're just women like really cool women women who dared um and you know some of them are old um kind of aged old timey and some of them are you know more new um here's an amelia Earhart. that's a pretty cool picture um no that is ruth elder I thought for sure that was Amelia Earhart. But anyway, um, the thing that really pulled me in was one of my favorite artists, Frida. So I was, I was excited. I bought this because our books are like $1.59 or something. I thought for all these postcards, even if I don't use them as postcards, I could fussy cut or use them uh, in, in junk journaling and um, all that good stuff. They're a little bit big to use in tags, unless I had a huge tag. Um, but you know, some of them are could be fussy cut smaller than than others if I wanted to do that. But I thought that was really cool. So I'm not counting it as a book because um, technically it's postcards. <laughs> so that's how I justified that purchase. And then I found this book. Um, it says "For Trove's Sake" by Leroy Brownlow, and I could just tell from the cover that this was going to be a full of like illustrations um but what's even better oh, i didn't even notice this this is a a bonus um this is a, a poetry book and i think it's self-published because it says brownlow publishing company um but it has these beautiful vintage um vignettes 
in it, like love related and flowers, florals. Um, so I was like, okay, of course I'm going to use those. I'm going to fussy cut those. Um, but also just the text. A lot of them have uh, poetry, famous poetry about love. Um, and I thought those would be fun to add to tags and maybe even make like um, when February rolls around to make uh, perhaps Valentine's. So um, it's, I just thought it was a very cool book and I had to get it because of the, um, the illustrations inside. And then of course I can always make this a junk journal cover um, because it's a good size and because it has this pretty floral on the front. So I did that and then I said three because I actually got uh, this magazine which was in the book section, and I think they charge them like books, but this is a, something that I'm trying to get into more. Um, I, I used to have a really big um, sewing machine that was old that was given to me. I have no clue where that went. I did buy a tiny one, and by tiny, I mean like that big. It's um, desktop sized, um, and I have no clue even how to thread it. Um, I do know how to hand stitch a little bit, but this is kind of the basics. And I thought, you know, just to have all that information in one place that I can pull out so that I don't have to go to maybe a Pinterest board or anything like that, I thought this was a good deal um, because, you know, it's gonna give me some information. So I bought that. Now, this was in the book section, but it was not a book. Um, these are technically papers that I'm using and I bought two of them. This, they were both 99 cents. I have not had any grid paper in a while and I've been wanting to play with grid paper. They were, like I said, both 99 cents. Um, I bought the both of them. There was another pad there that was $1.99 and it looked the exact same as this, so I wasn't sure why that was. Um, sometimes they price things a little strange. Um, this one was darker than this notebook. You can see this is a little bit more subtle. Um, and so I thought, okay, maybe I can uh, coffee dye some, tea dye some. Um, I'm actually also very interested in getting into like natural dyeing. So um, maybe experiment with those and play with that paper. And then I found this little box and I'm obsessed with these plastic containers because, um, you know, I can store beads or, um, you know, junk journal stuff in them. Um, this was $1.99, you, you just about can't get that for anything. Even if you go to Dollar Tree and get one of their small boxes, it's $1.25. So um, what I liked about this one is that the sections were big enough that it looked like it was big enough for pens or markers. So um, even though I have those kind of separated out, I may use this to um, store extra pens or pencils or things that I'm using more frequently. Um, or if I have something that is about to overflow its container, use it. So, um, that was a cheap buy. Okay. And then I bought a ton of fabric, <laughs> which I had not planned on doing because I still have a lot of the fabric that I bought, um, you know, over the past several months. And I'm just going to pull each piece out to show you kind of the patterns. But, um, the thing about our Goodwill, and it's probably this way everywhere, um, pillowcases are 99 cents, sheets are 99 cents. So really technically you get a better deal if you get sheets, but I don't have a lot of storage. So some of these things I bought purposely, um, as a pillowcase, uh, just because I need less, <laughs> less fabric. I've got to start using up all my fabric. Um, I may even use some of this fabric for prayer flags or for, you know, just as a, a painting surface because I've got to use up some of this. But I tried to get some things that had interesting colors or patterns um, or had a texture that was really interesting. Um, and then I got two scarves. So I'm going to start with the scarves. I bought this scarf. I think the scarves are like 99 cents or $1.19 or something like that. But this lace, because it had several patterns and then it has this um, trim, which I can also use on things. Um, and it has kind of excess. I loved the lace and it was really soft and it was kind of aged. It's not white, it's like a cream. So I thought that's perfect um, because I'm really into lace and um, this will be pretty to tear up and use for tags and um, 
journals and all that good stuff. And then I bought this scarf, which it immediately drew my interest because there's a color shift. Um, on the surface, it looks like it's blue, but when you look really closely, there's red thread. And whenever you move it in the light, it has this sheen to it. And so it's, it's gorgeous. Like I almost feel like I don't want to cut it up, but I can't be too precious about the things that I buy. It is silk. So I'm probably going to set it aside and think on it <laughs> just a little bit because it's just a pretty scarf. I could wear it, honestly, but I love the pattern. I love the colors. I don't really have a lot of journal, um, items and it is kind of pulled, you know, some threads are pulled and stretched. So, um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be too precious about the things that I've bought for junk journaling, but you can see it's, you know, I don't have a lot of things this color in my junk journal. Um, I don't have like any tags or anything, so it might be interesting to use this. It, you know, sometimes buying things gives you uh, a new aesthetic to work with. So, <clears throat> all right. So, um, and I, I have several of these, but I bought this because it's a different pattern. Uh, these lace tablecloths that you see, um, this was kind of an eyelet pattern. And it, again, it's not white. It's like a creamy aged color. Um, it's really thin, so it, it should be um, rippable. I hope it's rippable. <laughs> if not, I'm going to have to get creative. But um, if nothing else, this is a huge tablecloth. Um, I think this was like $1.99. I think tablecloths are $1.99. Um, I can use it to coffee dye or to spray ink through um, to create a pattern on paper. Because uh, I really do like this little pattern. I think it would make some interesting marks on papers. Um, and then, of course, I can tear up bits of it and, and um, all that good stuff. And I still have not washed all of this. I am going to wash it first. Just as a just as a habit, I do that. And then I found these napkins. There were only two of them. Um, like table linens. And I have gotten into recently um, the rust dyeing process. Rusting up things, aging things. So I'm thinking that I might save one. And keep it white and just use it that way it's it's a really thick um, fabric um, or paint on it and then the other I might rust to dye or maybe cut it in half and do some rust dye or some coffee dye on the other part um, but I just thought that was pretty and I liked this little scallop um, this little edge I wish they had all four um, or a whole full set because I, I may have kept them, honestly. <laughs> as much as I don't entertain anymore, I don't think any of us really entertain a whole lot uh, formally, but um, I just thought they were so pretty. I could also, you know, um, do a transfer on it or something. So I bought them, uh, I think they were 99 cents. I bought them to play with. And then I get into the sheets and the pillowcases. So the first thing that pops out to me was this, uh, this sheet. And I actually am going to look up these sheets because um, they are linen. I don't know if you can see it, but there we go. Um, this blue linen definitely goes with kind of how I like my decor in my home. Um, I like blues and grays and uh, whites, anything that's really serene. And I really um, would love to have a linen set for my bed, um, just when it's really hot, because I live in South Carolina, if you didn't know, um, and it's really hot <laughs> where I live, um, and linen is supposed to be a really cool um, sleeping uh, setup, so the only reason I'm not using this as a sheet, and I, I couldn't find the fitted sheet, couldn't find the pillowcases, this is a queen, and I have a king, so um, couldn't really make it work, but uh, this is a huge sheet, and I'm gonna get a lot of um, you know, tags or a lot of uh, maybe even painting surfaces. Again, just different things that I can use for junk journaling. Um, but I, I have, you know, 
that was a splurge for me because this is a lot of space this takes up. So, um, I really wanted that. And then I found this sheet, which is actually very thin and flimsy and very soft. Um, but I loved this light blue and I loved the little pattern and I thought it was going to be a, um, a lovely fabric to use in my journals. So again, those were 99 cents each. And then I think the rest are just pillowcases. And I'll show you, I bought these for, um, quite literally just for the patterns and the colors. So I bought two of these and I, I absolutely loved, you know, on my phone right now, they look more blue in, uh, in person. They have kind of a green tint to them. And I don't know if you can see that green tint. Um, when I move them farther away, they look blue, but they're kind of a, a sea green, if that makes sense. Um, and I bought two of them because they were, you know, I thought nobody's going to buy <laughs> the other one now that I've abandoned it. So, you know, for 99 cents and I really liked the pattern, I went ahead and bought both of them. And then I found, I'm really getting drawn to these, um, more neutral palettes, especially lately. Um, this one, again, it looks more beigey, but in person, it's kind of a, um, a pinkish tint to it. Um, not really pink. I don't want to say mauve either. It's kind of a, hmm, a sandy rose or something like that. And then there's some green and, and blue in there, but um, I really liked the pattern. And I thought it would make some interesting, uh, usually when I buy pillowcases, I look at um, pillowcases for, you know, um, tags. And um, I think this is going to be a pretty uh, thing to rip up for tags. And same thing here. I really liked this pattern. Um, and I liked that it was a neutral color. It's really just kind of a beige. Um, Kind of simple, but uh, but enough of something, and I liked that it had kind of a light background there. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and then I don't really have any greens like this, so I decided to grab three greens, and I'll go ahead and pull out just the greens here so I can show you. When I saw each one, I was like, okay, I don't have any of these colors. So I have kind of a light, medium, and a dark. <laughs> Um, this light one is very light. It looks almost white. It's, um, it's not old, so it's not like it's washed out, and you can't really tell that it's a green tint, but maybe if I put this white up next to it, you can see. Um, it's kind of a green cast, um, but you have to really look at it <laughs> because it's uh, so light, and I really loved that because I think that's going to add to, it's kind of a pastel top color. It's going to add to whatever I'm using it for. And then my medium one um, has kind of a stripe to it, which is interesting. I don't know how it will rip. Sometimes these stronger fabrics rip better, uh, surprisingly, because they're very stringy, and I like that. Um, but this medium green is uh, kind of a sagey color, which I love. Um, or maybe this is the sage. This is more like oregano. And this is just a plain, cheap uh, green sheet or green pillowcase. Um, not really an interesting texture, although it is kind of rough. Uh, so that might be interesting. But um, I couldn't decide which green I liked, so <laughs> I just got all three of them. And then um, <clears throat> same thing with these next two. Uh, they're, they're so light that you can't really tell the color shift probably until I hold up um, next to white. But you can see this is just this, the slightest pink or blush. And I love that color. I'm using it so much in my journal. Um, it's so slight that you just about can't see it, especially on this in this warm uh, light. You, you really have a hard time picking it up on camera. And then the same thing with this blue. It's just a very light blue, but it's hard to see unless you've got it up next to a white 
um, piece of fabric. So, um, again, just cheap pillowcases. And then these are pretty easy to pick up. You can see this purple. And it is a... Hmm, I don't want to say it's a red purple. And I don't want to say it's a blue purple. It's kind of a neutral purple. Um, it's hard to see in this light. And then the last two I got... Um, I got this because I loved the pattern and it was actually a very small pillowcase. Um, but I love this pattern and I love that it's neutral. That means I can use it with a lot of different journals. And uh, and I, I realized I didn't have a black. I didn't have a black anything. So I got this pillowcase um, because black, again, you know, using black with maybe this color might be interesting, right? I just love that. <laughs> and those are the fabrics I got. I got way too many. I got carried away. Somebody should have rescued me. Okay, so that's what I got at Dollar Tree, or um, no, that's what I got at the thrift store. Um, and now I'm gonna go through what I got at Dollar Tree. I probably shouldn't have done this because I have so many file folders. However, these file folders are like the legal size. Um, you can see here's some copy paper. They're long. And I've seen a lot of people making journals out of this size of uh, file folders. And I don't always see this size. In fact, I, I very rarely see this size at Dollar Tree. Uh, they must have just restocked. So I grabbed two packs. So that's 12, uh, 12 folders. That'll be plenty for a while. Um, I have a ton of file folders in um, in my file box that I that are just empty um, because I don't keep paper copies of anything anymore. Um, they they literally are just dedicated to uh, junk journaling and art. <laughs> so I have um, you know I have so many of these that it felt like I shouldn't be buying these. But I told myself you know you don't have any this size, and it's easy to cut something down when it's too big. It's, you know, you can't add two. So, um, I bought these two. And then I bought two more packs of paper. Um, I got some copy paper. I have some copy paper here, but it's better quality than this. Um, I've not been printing a lot. So, I, I felt like, you know, I could be wasting a dollar twenty-five here. But I wanted to do some more coffee dye and tea dye um, papers and I wanted just to, to grab the pack and throw it in. I didn't want to have to look for it. I didn't want to have to sort it out. I didn't want to have to do anything to it. I just wanted to open it and put it in. So um, I'm not going to dye this whole um, notebook paper pack, but I am going to dye probably half of it if I can. Um, so I'm going to do that here in just a few minutes. Um, I won't do that on camera, obviously, but... Um, I, you know, grabbed those specifically because I'm out of coffee dyed paper and I really wanted to use some. So, um, so I got those and then I've been seeing some projects where this compass would have been a lot easier to use. Um, and then it came with a protractor as well, which, you know, I can use that for sure. So I went ahead and grabbed it because I didn't, I, honestly, in all of my stuff, I may have one of these, but I haven't been able to locate anything, so <laughs> I am just going to, uh, you know, grab this up and use it. Um, and then I saw a um, a person on, I believe it was on TikTok, maybe maybe Instagram, who was using glitter glue sticks and then making glue seals. Um, out of, with the glitter glue and you know I actually had to search for um, a couple weeks to get these and I'm gonna play with this uh, play with my, my seals and see what they look like I don't love the color selection but they may look more interesting once they are seals so I'll um I'll update you on that and I got this I have actually never bought one of these. I've seen them a million times, these little lip scrubbers. And if you look up close, um, they look really stippled. 
and I thought this might be an interesting pattern to use with um, with my distress ink or with my ink pads just as a pattern like on scraps of paper and I'm gonna play with that and see what it makes um, if it makes something interesting I'll try to attach it to this video so that you can see but um, I figured I'd play with it if nothing else I can use it to spread glue. Um, anything that has silicone on the end is, is highly usable. I can use it to add texture to paint um, on my jelly plates. I can do a bunch of stuff with this, but that's why I bought it was because it had this little stipple pattern and I really wanted to see if I could use it with ink. So there we go. And then I found this um, these little stickers I actually got two packs of them. They're puffy stickers. I know Dollar Tree has started carrying a lot of these puffy 3D stickers, and I thought these would be pretty, um, maybe in like a, a stack or on a tag, um, just as embellishments. I just really thought these were cute and springy, and you know, technically we're we're going into we're in fall now, so it's kind of silly to be using these. But I figured I can use these, or I can put them aside for spring. Um, maybe when I'm making a spring journal. I got two because I always regret it if I don't. Um, and then I got this little book. Um, I have so many notepads that, again, I felt a little guilty, but this is what I saw. Um, the dotted pages was what threw me. Um, I thought this would be really cool paper. Uh, it's kind of like the grid paper, except just dots. And I thought, you know, I can coffee dye or tea dye some of these and experiment with this pattern, and uh, and it might do some interesting things. So, um, again, I got this at Dollar Tree. I will say, it does have a strong smell. Um, it smells almost like cleaning supplies. I don't know if it's this paper or if it's just <laughs> my Dollar Tree, but um, if you haven't seen these, look for them in the office supplies. And then this is the last thing. Um, I actually have the other Dollar Tree glue sticks and they're working just fine. I know a lot of crafters use the Uhu, um, and I just can't justify buying a glue stick that costs more than a dollar twenty. And actually the glue sticks at Dollar Tree are in packs of like eight. So I cannot justify paying more than a dollar for a glue stick. Um, but this is a different kind of glue. This is the Avery brand of glue stick, and usually Avery's pretty good because it's a, you know, it is a paper supply, um, office supply company. And I love that this glue stick is so big. Um, I love the, the, the big glue sticks when I'm doing big projects. Um, so I thought I would, you know, um, see how good it is. If you've used this glue, tell me how you feel about it, um, whether or not it's any good. And uh, I'm gonna experiment and see if it's stickier because I will say the Dollar Tree glue, um, you usually have to use a lot of it and you, you know, you have to hold it a little bit for it to grab on. This might be a better quality glue. So I felt like, you know, I can splurge and spend the $1.25 to uh, to work on this work with this so that is what i got that is my haul uh, let me know if you saw anything that maybe you would use um, differently than the way i thought i was going to use it let me know um, what you think of the haul i honestly don't have a total because like i said i bought other things so i probably could sit here and, and add it up but um you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'll just say that, you know, I probably spent 50 bucks on all this stuff. Um, that's a lot. Oh, I did say that I have, um, I had bought two, uh, or bought some jelly plates. And I actually don't have any from this company. I, all of the ones that I bought were, um, previously were from jelly printing the, that brand and I bought these little I splurged and bought the um, oval the rectangle and the uh, hexagon and then the triangle square and the circle and I'm gonna experiment with these on my scrap paper like the the small pieces that you're, you're not sure what to do with I want to play with these um, just because to get out my big jelly plate um, you know, it just takes 
uh, takes up a lot of space on my desk and I don't always have a lot of space on my desk. Uh, so I'm going to play with these. Let me know if you have these. If you are doing projects with these regularly, send me, drop me a link. Um, I would love to follow along on what you're doing. Um, I, that's it for me today. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.